So I'd like to spend a few minutes demonstrating for you how you might go about injecting lidocaine into uh, skin tissue before you uh, suture. So things you need to consider as you're injecting, uh, depending on whether it's a, a clean lac or a dirty lac. So um, real quickly, here's a, an example of something you might actually inject with. So this is uh, lidocaine with epinephrine. Concentration 1 to 100,000, uh, lidocaine 2% with epi. So something you might inject with, uh, you know, there's plain lidocaine that doesn't include the epinephrine. There's lidocaine 1%. Really, lidocaine 1% seems to work plenty well for uh, most things, but you can also use uh, bupiv bupivacaine, which is marcaine. Um, lasts longer, takes a little longer to start working. But um, for our purposes in this video, I'm just going to use this, this middle laceration here, okay, uh, to demonstrate, and I'm going to use uh, this needle. Now, uh, this syringe is only a 3cc syringe. Normally, I'd use something like a 6cc and maybe a draw up, depending on the, the length of the laceration, but for something like this, I might draw up, you know, maybe 5 cc's of lidocaine just to make sure that I've got uh, enough here. But um, the needle, generally a needle that you want to use is something like a, a 25 27 or 30 gauge needle, so a pretty high gauge needle, which is a small needle, um, and generally an inch and a half to two inches long. Now for this video I'm using something larger, this is actually a 23 gauge, just simply to, uh, for the ease, so that you can see it a little bit better for this video. So, but normally I'd use something much smaller than this. So for uh, injecting lidocaine, Notice we've got our skin edges, in this case, pretty well approximated, but it's pretty much a nice linear laceration. Whether I inject within the incision, within the laceration itself, going into the laceration before I actually penetrate with the needle, or I stay outside of the laceration, depends on one main factor is, how clean was this? Okay. If this is an incision that I made in the operating room, and now we are actually going to uh, provide a little bit more local anesthetic right before we close it, um, so that the patient has a little bit longer pain relief, then I'm, because it's nice and clean, I'm actually going to not penetrate skin that I don't need to penetrate, and I'm just going to all use the skin that's already cut. Okay. Uh, we could also do the same thing if this were a laceration in the emergency room in urgent care, but it was a very clean laceration. There wasn't a lot of debris. I didn't have to do a lot of uh, cleaning, um, and I'm not too worried about infection. I could do the same thing. But if it's a dirty laceration, if this is uh, a patient that had a lot of debris, I ended up having to clean a lot of gravel out and a lot of grass or things like that, and I'm, I'm a little more worried about infection, then I'm probably not going to stick a needle in in this direction because I, I think there might already be something down in there and so if I push in with a needle now I'm driving contaminants from within the laceration further into the skin potentially increasing the risk of infection a little higher so instead I'm going to clean the edges out here on the outside and probably use some kind of a solution that has an antiseptic like a betadine or something um, and then penetrate the skin outside of that laceration so I'm not as worried about pushing contaminants into the skin. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me demonstrate both now, uh, both ideas. So depending on the size of the laceration with something this long, uh, that's roughly the same length as my needle, I can probably do most of what I need to do from uh, further down within the laceration. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna start about halfway in the middle. So I'm going to go bevel up just underneath the epidermis into the dermis here and I'm going to uh, position my angle so that I can advance this needle through the tissue here and up towards that apex up here okay and then the recommendations are back and forth on this but I generally like to pull back just a little bit with the plunger to make sure that I have not placed that tip of the needle into a large vessel. If I start to aspirate a little bit and I get blood pulling into the into my, my syringe, I know I've got my needle into a large vessel and I shouldn't inject lidocaine into a large vessel. The worry is lidocaine is an antiarrhythmic medication. You inject a large that a large amount of that into a large vessel and now you've got to worry about uh, 
uh, heart arrhythmias. So I generally do a slight uh, aspiration to make sure before I now start injecting as I slowly withdraw that needle. Now some people might say, well, why don't you inject as you go, as you advance? Uh, my thought is, what if I advance into a large vessel and now I'm injecting that lidocaine straight into that vessel without realizing it? Another idea is, if I'm injecting as I go, it takes several seconds for the, the anesthetic to actually kick in and numb the skin, so it doesn't necessarily do much good to be advancing as you go. It doesn't necessarily numb the skin that quickly for the patient. Okay. Now notice I pulled back, but I didn't pull all the way out. The bevel of the needle is still buried, and now I'm going to reposition, and I'm going to advance the needle again a little bit. Get in right there, and I'm going to again aspirate just a little bit, and then inject as I withdraw. And then before I'm all the way out of that skin edge again, I'm going to reposition my needle. And notice I'm fanning out a little bit. Now I'm going to inject more as I come out, and I'm doing a fan type positioning but all from one spot within uh, my needle has only penetrated the tissue in one location so far uh, thereby minimizing the amount of damage to the tissue and I can inject all along this side from one hole Okay, makes sense. Now, if I were to say this was a dirty laceration, it required a lot of cleaning and I'm worried about infection, then I'm probably going to clean the outside with an antiseptic um, and inject from outside of the skin edges like this. And so I, in this case, I'm going to do a similar thing, except I'm, in, I'm going to advance along the skin edge there but my my point of entry was actually outside of the laceration. Same idea, pull back on that plunger just a little bit, make sure I'm not in a large vein, and then slowly inject as I withdraw. Um, the slower you inject, the less painful it is for the patient, but it's still going to be that idea of a poke and a burn. So again, I'm gonna get to the point where my needle is not quite out of the skin all the way. I'm going to turn, turn, and then it, advance again. So again, even I'm injecting along this whole length of the laceration, but only with one poke of the needle, thereby minimizing uh, the damage to the patient's tissue. Okay, then I'm going to dispose of that sharp, I'm going to give it a few minutes, um, check it uh, with with maybe, maybe my, uh, my AdSense to make sure that they're nice and numb and then ready to start suturing.